I thought that was so funny. Uh, yeah, blast from the past, man. Uh, how how was that one? Directed by uh, the late great Hugh Wilson. Uh, oh yeah, of WKRP. Of WKRP fame, and the little girl was his daughter, actually. Yeah, she's in college now, I think. <laughs> um, and it was a love letter to his own father, as I remember him saying, who he, he clearly loved, but admired a great deal also, because he, he didn't subscribe to, again, the tropes of what it means to be a man and, and have, um, have, have, have a worldview that's limiting. And he, he believed in chivalry, um, and that that's not gone away, and that uh, what it means to be a gentleman is 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 it's not just somebody who owns horses, you know, uh, but it means that that person does his or her best to make those around him or her as comfortable as possible at all times. And that's the sign of respect that you show them. It's, it's in kind of the reason why it's appropriate to have good table manners. It shows others that you care for them. And it, it, Adam in this story is a product of his time. He was born in the 50s. Uh, his, his father is Christopher Walken and his mom is Sissy Spacek. And, and Sissy Spacek's performance was described um, perfectly. I can't remember where I read it, but I'll tell you. Someone described her as, as June Allison on Listerine. <laughs> 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 uh, Walken was fantastic. He's, he's Chris. You know, I, I don't do a very good Chris for Walken. Um, he, uh, he likes to eat interesting combinations of foods in the morning. I'm talking like, seriously? Sauteed garlic and anchovies? <laughs> seriously? I don't know, it keeps him going. And he sucks on lemon wedges before he's got a lot of dialogue to speak. So he's like, you know, it keeps your mouth open and ready. So there were constantly like <laughs> these lemon wedges stashed and hit all over the set. <laughs> There's one scene that you he, he didn't see. It's uh, him sending his son, Adam, up to the top to basically go on a liquor run. Um, and he tells him to bring a woman on down because <laughs> he needs to find a wife. You know, that's what you do. And so <laughs> Chris had a, heart, uh, had a hearty breakfast that morning, but the scene was me trying to get away, and he keeps pulling me down because he's pretending, like, I'm dying, I'm dying. But he's kept going, and another thing. <laughs> And one more thing! <laughs> you can actually see the tears forming in my eyes oh my on camera, God. and it was perfect. <laughs> Never change, man. Never change. Brilliant. Yeah. That movie, I think, is underrated, actually. That it's nice that people find it again later. And, yeah. Um, you know, I, I see that I do a lot of, I have done a lot in recent years, I've done a lot of fan conventions, and I, I love meeting the people who put me where I am and saying thank you. Because I, with, without that relationship, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do what I do, and I'm so grateful. So I'm, again, I'm gonna take this moment and say thank you for being here to see this. It means the world to me, it really does. Thank you. Uh, so I mentioned at the beginning that I celebrated the 20th anniversary of The Mummy with you in Indiana. We are about to celebrate the 24th anniversary together of The Mummy. <laughs> and uh, uh, three movies, The Mummy, The Mummy Returns, uh, and uh, The Mummy, uh, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, which, by the way, co-starred Michelle Yeoh, who's nominated for Best Actress this year. The, con the connections continue of all your co-stars in you. So it's like, again, the one small campus getting smaller all the time. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Well, The Mummy obviously was a huge, huge hit and a huge moment in your career. Uh, you know, when you look back at it, 
Um, let me start out by saying you did three, you should be doing more. And Tom Cruise did one, and I love Tom Cruise. I think he just saved Hollywood, as Steven Spielberg just said yesterday. Uh, brilliant, but he did The Mummy in 2017, and all people were saying is, where's Brendan Fraser? <laughs> I, I was at the theater on opening day watching Tom's movie. <laughs> That's where I was. <laughs> there was nobody else in the house with me, <laughs> aside from my two kids. <laughs> and I know how hard it is to make that movie. I tried to do it three times, okay? Yeah. It's, thank you. It, it, look, it's, it's high octane energy and comedy and adventure and romance. All of that. Everything all wrapped up in one, all set in the background of where uh, Gunga Din and Lawrence of Arabia was shot, the very same deserts, you know? So it, it was epic in scope and had cutting edge uh, CGI, courtesy of John Burton from ILM. And um, we went into it really not knowing what the film was going to be, but it turned out to be wildly entertaining. And um, the, the, the tricky thing about, the, the thing about making that movie is you gotta remember that it's a thrill ride, you know? People wanna get shook up and you know, boo scared a little bit. They don't want to be terrified, you know, but um, it, striking that balance is, is, the, is the trick that Stephen Summers, who wrote it, um, I think was just brilliant. Brilliant, really brilliant at, yeah. It's so much action, so much stuff you go through, camels, everything, all of, all of that kind of playground, which is so fun, again, I'll use that word, that you got to play with it in this kind of um, concept and, and this franchise, amazing. And it reintroduced the cabinet of um, uh, classic um, uh, Universal Monsters, right. too. Up, in, up until the point um, of the late 90s, if you, you, know, you were gonna make a mummy movie, it was about a guy wrapped in bandages who went, uh, and sort of walked slowly after you, which is kind of creepy too, but um, <laughs> this was not that. It's, I, can still, I can still hear Stephen Summer over the bullhorn in the desert of Awarzazat, and he, there's set pieces that have been built for weeks ahead of us, and a hundred extras, and animals, camels, and horses, and all this gear and kit everywhere. And me and Rachel and John Hanna, um, we gotta run from A to B while everything falls down and goes bang. And when it comes to the moment of truth, we're really doing it. And he, he calls out through the bullhorn, Ready and don't suck action. <laughs> don't suck. Well, you didn't. You didn't suck. I, didn't suck. <laughs> I think he meant because we would have to reset and go again, and that was a very expensive set piece and all that stuff. But. I already told you about me and my attitude about that with the elephant <laughs> spending some Disney money. <laughs> By the way, I have to ask you about the, uh, we're going to show a clip from The Mummy, but The Mummy Returns also was the first major feature film. He was in a supporting role. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, played the Scorpion King. This was right at the he was in wrestling and things, but he had not made movies. Uh, what was it like working with him in, in, in The Mummy? I'm gonna blow your mind, Pete, because he and I never met in person until after the premiere <laughs> at the reception afterwards, because on the day, Dwayne was a piece of tape on a stick. <laughs> really? Truly. To get the eye line right, someone was walking around with a stick, and we're going, he's going, ah, oh, and we're going, ooh, you know, and, and the, you know, acting, yeah, that was, that was, that was the drill. And then the movie came out, and we <laughs> saw how the Scorpion King presented. <laughs> it was funny back then, too. <laughs> 
because the guys that did it had introduced themselves to me and they were like, hey, how are you, man? Yeah, we did the CGI of uh, Scorpion King. I know, I know, I, we know. We, we needed more time, you know, they were saying. But I love the janky quality of that monster, you know? <laughs> it reminds me of all the best video games we played, you know? It, it was appropriate, it was picture perfect for, for its time. And I, yeah, I think it would be sad if it, there was like a remastering of it and they went back in and you know, made it all slick and perfect. It's good if it just kind of you know, does it, lives in its own way. Yeah. It's fun, yeah, it's fun. We're, we're gonna take a look at that and a movie called Bedazzled, which, yeah, oh, <laughs> woo! Okay, Bedazzled, in which you play numerous characters. Uh, the w clip we're going to see from Bedazzled, I will just say, plays a Colombian drug lord, but that's just one of them. Uh, so let's take a look at The Mummy and Bedazzled. <laughs> 